Hello, so today I want to talk about how do you estimate arrow speed at various grain per pound given a speed test result. So uh, to do this, I'll be using three AF bows and they're all of very low poundage. So you might wonder why do I use low poundage? Well, there's two reasons. One of them is because I'm actually not that strong. Uh, and secondly, is because low poundage actually tells you better if a bow is efficient or not. When the poundage is high, because poundages go up a lot faster than the physical weight, so when poundage is high, it kind of like masks away the inefficiency of the design. So when you're at a low poundage, if the bow is inefficient, it shows very easily. All right. So uh, the first bow will be this, uh, the, the Sultan. In uh, my language, would be Sultan. Okay. So the Sultan. Uh, this one here is 25 pound, uh, 28 inch to the belly. And uh, if you want to know more details about this bow, I actually talked about it in uh, my recent video. Uh, look for the one with the title, uh, 5 AF Bows in uh, 32 Minutes. So this bow, uh, just going to summarize some of the things I like about it. The bow itself looks alright. It's actually not bad at all. Um, the, the angle here is steeper than all the other previous version. Um, it does have a deflex here to help stabilize the more aggressive sear. And this handle here is seriously big. Okay, It is a really big handle compared to all the other AF bows. And as a result, it actually helps to cushion the hand shot and vibration. Uh, I've been shooting it for speed test and I do like what I feel about it. The bow is smooth to draw, uh, hand shot and vibration is actually very on the low side considering how cheap this bow is. Um, and uh, speed wise however, it's actually not that good and uh, later when you, when, you, when you see the speed test result, um, yeah, it's not, it's not that fast. Um, whether it's because it's a Turkish bow, I do not know. Okay, that one is for you to judge but the result wasn't that great. Uh, second bow. Okay, so the second bow here, the AF Babylon um, Bamboo. Okay, so this one I've been talking over, I think, a few videos. And uh, okay, this one here is a 24 pound, sorry, 24 and a half pounds at 28 inch to the belly. Um, it is actually the better, better value bow compared to the carbon ceramic sibling. So, um, I do find that the handle is more comfortable, uh, arrow pass just as good, the bow just as slim, it has some fit, a bit more weight to it, so it is more stable, um, as in like, you know, when you, when you hold a full draw, it doesn't move as much. Uh, physical weight, it is, there is a bit of difference. This one here weighs 362 grams, the carbon sibling 298 grams, oh, by the way, the Sultan is 312 grams, I just weighed it just now. All right. The sear of this bow is very slim. Uh, price is very good, my friend. This is a very, very good value bow. And performance-wise, uh, since I've tested it already, so uh, I can tell you right away that the speed difference, if for the same poundage and the same grain per pound, it is only about two feet per second slower than the carbon ceramic version. So given just two feet per second difference, I would say this is actually an absolutely better bow than the carbon one. Okay, so now next, the carbon one. Okay, so <laughs> again, I've talked about this one for a couple of videos already. Um, the handle on this one, it is a little bit on the small side. And the physical weight of this one is very light at just 298 grams. It really feels like you can blow it away. You just blow it and it'll fly. No, not, not, not that much. Uh, this is just an exaggeration. But yes, in your hand, it feels like nothing. It is so ridiculously light. Um, the limb, there is good and bad about it. Watch my other video uh, where I was talking about the Mariner against the AF, there are certain things that uh, you have to watch out for on the carbon version. Uh, Sia is extremely thin. 
which is what make make me buy it in the first place. Okay, so um, given the price of this one compared to the bamboo version, uh, for just two feet per second faster, I feel that this is actually not as great of a value. And combined with there is actually some quality concern on this one. All right. So um, now I'm gonna go into uh, some speed test and then we're gonna talk about some math and the result. Fire. Fire. More, 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 more fire. 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 More, more, more fire. A little bit more fire. Fire. More fire. Alright, so now I've got to bore you a little bit with some of the math but I'm going to try to get through it as quick as possible. So our goal is to figure out how do we estimate an arrow speed at various grain per pound. Uh, for example, if you know your bow shoots at 185 feet per second at a 10 grain per pound and 28 inch draw, what would be the arrow speed at 12 grain per pound? Uh, of course, assuming the same draw length. So one of the limitations of this method is that we have to assume you are, do, you are using exactly the same draw length because if you draw further, you get more energy, you get more speed, even if you have the exact same grain per pound, right? So draw length matters. Uh, so I've seen some people who comment that, uh, you know, they, they can use very high poundages and whatever draw length and they get a better result. Yes, you know, the thing is that I could have asked a bowyer to give me a 70 pound and asked some crazy guy to draw it to 34 inches, uh, shooting some crazy, I don't know, maybe three grain per pound arrow, and we can get an absolutely crazy speed out of that. But that is not realistic because uh, most people do not draw such a high poundage, most people do not draw it as far back, and most people don't use such a lightweight arrow which could void their warranty and destroy their bow. So I want to give some realistic expectation to people and uh, by the industry standard, okay, I didn't set it. The industry set standard is that uh, normally they are tested at nine grain, uh, nine grain per pound with a twenty-eight inch draw length. Uh, in my particular case for this one, because the poundage is very very low and the lightest arrow I can have is too heavy, so I can't get nine grain per pound. Uh, sometimes some some bows cannot use such a low arrow weight either, so this is subjective. So. When you look at arrow speed, you always have to look at what condition it is tested. And then if you want to make some prediction, you can predict a little bit away from that number that was given. All right, so let's go to the some basic physics and math here. So E represents the polar energy in the system. Uh, M represents the mass of the arrow. V, the velocity of the arrow. Okay, this G here is not gravity. Um, I just use it as representing our grain per pound of the setup, the bow setup. Uh, F being the force, the bow's poundage, and K is just a constant, uh, whatever the weight conversion is. For example, sometimes you may prefer to use uh, grams, you may prefer to use uh, grains, whatever it is, doesn't matter. It is some sort of conversion ratio, all right? So, uh, O here and one, you see this, this, in, this um, I don't know, sub-index or whatever it's called, sub, sub well, yeah, whatever. So, uh, this O here represents the original, the, the, the data that was given, and one here, this represents the, the, the information we try to calculate, all right? So, the energy initially, all right, 
energy initially in the, in, the, in the system, as you draw the bow back, the energy there is assumed, okay, we have to make an assumption here, we assume it's going to be the same, just as much as what we're going to calculate, okay. This would be fairly accurate, fairly true, if the, uh, the predicted value is very, very, very close to the data that you have then the efficiency number is not going to change significantly. However, if the grain per pound that you want to estimate is far off, then this can actually be very different. All right, so we're going to have to make an assumption first that the energy in the given data and the energy of what you try to calculate is going to be approximately the same. This is just a formula for kinetic energy. So it's half of the mass of the arrow that was tested. All right. Uh, and the velocity that you, you got from the test. That's going to be equal to the same thing, half of the arrow that you want to use to get your, your ideal grain per pound and its velocity that you want to calculate. So the mass of the arrow is actually your grain per pound multiplied by the poundage of the bow multiplied with some conversion ratio, right? Because let's say if you have a 10 grain per pound uh, setup, and you have a 50 pound bow, you multiply that, that's 500 grains. So it is some sort of a grain per pound times your, your bow's poundage, and you convert it to whatever unit you want, whether it's a gram, grains, whatever. And we repeat the same here. All right, it's, it's going to be exactly the same. And what you will find is that there are certain constants here that can cancel out, like half here can, cancels out. The force of the bow is the same. You're using the same exact bow in both situations. So it cancels out. The poundage of the bow doesn't matter. The uh, conversion ratio here also cancels out, which, which is why I just put it as a constant. We're going to just ignore it. It doesn't matter. Uh, so once you have removed those constants, you will find that this one here, uh, the grain per pound of your test data times its velocity square is going to be the same as the grain per pound that you want to calculate time is velocity squared. And solving that for V1, you'll find that uh, it is a very simple thing. Basically, it is your initial speed, the one that you tested, multiplied by the square root of the ratio uh, between the initial grain per pound and the one you want to calculate. It's that simple, all right? So basically, it's uh, whatever speed you want to calculate, you just plug in the data, the speed data here, and then this was what the uh, arrow speed that, uh, sorry, the, the grain per pound that you, that the data was obtained from, and this is the grain per pound that you want to calculate for. You plug those in, and then we have this information here. All right, so for the AF Sultan, the one that's red color just now, uh, it is a 25 pound, 28. Uh, the chrono result, uh, calculated to be 13.87 grain per pound, okay, uh, we got 159.7 feet per second. And if you do that, you will find that the estimated speed at 14.0 grain per pound is 159 feet per second. So because these two numbers here are extremely close to each other, you can say that this one here is actually fairly accurate uh, estimation. However, if we are gonna we're gonna uh, estimate numbers that are further away from our reference data, it won't be as accurate. Okay, the further you are, the less accurate the prediction is gonna be. So, for example, thirteen gram per pound. Uh, if you will calculate, it's one hundred sixty five feet per second, and uh, and then for a twelve gram per pound, one hundred seventy one point seven. Uh, 11 grams per pound, 179.3 feet per second. However, because as you go down in arrow weight, you actually lose a little bit of efficiency. So, uh, of course, this number here, where we deduct 1%, deduct 2%, and deduct 3%, is purely a guessing number, okay? It is not accurate. It is not the real deal. If you want to get the real speed, you have to actually uh, chrono the bow at that specific grain per pound. This one here is kind of like a convenience for you. If you don't have the setup to do it, you can predict 
okay you can predict it is not perfect because different bowl react differently so uh, this is just a very generic assumption that as the uh, grain per pound decrease you lose efficiency and therefore we are subtracting more percentage as we go lower and after you account for this that is the predicted feet per second uh, for the various grain per pound we apply over here so the af babylon bamboo uh, that's the poundage so this one here we chrono it to be a uh, 14.16 grain per pound we got 166.9 feet per second so uh, the same calculation applies here but now if you look compare you see at 14 grain per pound because both of these are as close as possible to our reference data both of these are actually fairly accurate result and we find that this bow here you would get 167.9 feet per second whereas this one is only 159 for the same grain per pound so the sultan is not as efficient as i thought uh, whether it is just lack of energy storage or lack in efficiency that i do not know but the the, the speed result is actually uh, quite quite big from in my opinion uh, which is like uh, how much is that that's almost a uh, nine it's almost a nine feet per second difference between this and that so that is quite substantial in my opinion uh, so this is not as efficient as i would hope to be uh, whereas this one actually surprises me this is actually really good all right so same calculation the numbers will be also uh, added into the uh, description the video's description so i'm not going to read everything out for you you can see it or you just read the, the video's description now the af babylon carbon with the poundage over there the chrono 13.86 grain per pound we got 170.4 feet per second now if you just look purely at the number you find that of course this is better than this because the grain per pound on this one is lower than that okay but once we do the conversion you see at 14.0 grain per pound 169.5 feet per second compared to 167.9 is really not that far off um let's see how far is that there is less than two feet per second difference uh which considering the price difference uh i would say that this is a really a remarkable remarkable value uh, and, and it doesn't have as much problem uh this one yes it does perform better so you can look at all the numbers and regardless it's uh whether it's from 11 12 13 14 grain per pound we are always getting approximately about maybe less than two feet per second difference so uh are you going to pay that much more money for two feet per second um my personal opinion i would recommend this one okay so even though this may be very tempting because you are getting like high-tech materials carbon ceramic and a very beautiful bowl uh, but considering the potential problem that you may have uh, and the price that you have to pay for it for almost very small gain uh, I will very very recommend this one over this one 